let's talk about uh, the problems uh, problems with fragmentation and reassembly. Problem with IP. Fragmentation. And reassembly. Why we consider it harmful, right? What? Uh, IP fragmentation and assembly. There are there are different reasons. First. The reason number one is that it com complicates routers and end systems. Why? Because now they have to accommodate uh, datagram uh, fragmentation and reassembly. So number one is it complicates. The implementation of routers. And. Uh, and systems. Why? Because which need to accommodate IP fragmentation and reassembly. So we are making the, especially the job of router, uh, difficult by, uh, you know, manage, uh, manage by asking it to manage IP fragmentation and uh, especially fragmentation because these assembly is done at the end machine. Second, second is that we can create variety of attacks, right? So for example, we can create a DOS attack uh, because of this uh, fragmentation and reassembly. How? Uh, because um, an attacker, because the, att the attacker uh, the attacker can uh, uh, send series of uh, bizarre and unexpected fragments, right? Which the receiver won't be able to uh, reassemble, right? So the attacker can send a series of bizarre and unexpected fragments, which will create a problem for the end machine to um, accommodate uh, these fragments or uh, we can also come across a problem known as overlapping. Um, overlapping IP fragments. Overlapping IP fragments uh, means uh, the, the, the values of uh, fragments are set in a, such a way uh, that uh, they do not align properly. Right? So fragments, fragments do not align properly. Why? Because the values are uh, fragment offsets and other values are set in such a way. But there are other very interesting reasons that uh, I would like to discuss in uh, detail. And say the reason number three is what if I lose one fragment? So, so if you lose one fragment, what will happen? What do you think? Yes, this means I will lose the whole uh, whole packet, the larger data grid. And let's try to understand it with the help of an example. Why this happens, by the way? Because 
because uh, because kernel kernel has limited buffer space. Number one, or uh, the second important thing is that IP does not know the number of fragments per packet. IP does not know. Uh, number number of fragments per packet. Right, and let's try to understand this point number three, which is very interesting with the uh, help of an example. So, so let's assume that uh, that a sender uh, sends two packets. Sender sends two packets. Uh, say A and B. And uh, A is fragmented uh, fragmented into eight fragments. So A is fragmented uh, into eight fragments. And let's assume that the second packet B is fragmented into two fragments, smaller fragments, fragmented into two smaller fragments. Right, and let me also uh, have this condition on the receiver buffer, that the receiver buffer has eight buffer slots. Receiver has eight total buffer slots. Okay, and now uh, let's assume uh, let's suppose that fragments arrive in the following order. First, we have um, first we have fragment A1, then A2, A3, A4, A5, A6, A7, and then arrives B1, right? And after that, uh, then arrives uh, A8 and the second fragment of uh, the second packet uh, B2. So what will happen with uh, A8 and B2? A8 and B2 will be dropped. Why? Because uh, the, uh, we have total eight buffer slots here, right? Because the receiver's buffer fills up after B1, both packets, these, this A8 and uh, uh, B2 uh, thrown away, right? And when the reassembly timer times out, this means we have lost uh, the whole packet A and whole packet B. This means uh, the sender has to retransmit um, this packet A and B. And another very interesting uh, consideration uh, for considering fragmentation harmful is, and this is, we can call it reason number four. That is uh, inefficient transmission. So fragmentation and re fragmentation basically results in uh, inefficient transmission. Let's try to understand this with the help of an example that how uh, fragmentation results in inefficient transmission. So let's assume, so let's try to understand this with the help of example. Let's assume that I have to transmit a uh, data of 10 kilobyte. 10 kilobyte of data to be transmitted. And um, uh, let's assume that TCP, um, let's assume we sent, or this 10 kilobytes of data is sent as uh, 1024 
fight TCP segments. So we uh, try to uh, you know uh, send it uh, as a TCP segment of one zero two four bytes. Uh, this means this means uh, we'll be using how many IP packets? Yes, you're right. So this means we will be uses or it uses 10 IP packets to be transmitted from machine A to machine B. And what will be the size of each IP packet? Yes, 1064. So the size of each IP packet is 10, uh, uh, 1064 uh, bytes. How 1064 bytes? What do you think? Yes, so the data size is uh, 1024. So we have 20 bytes of TCP segment header and 20 bytes of IP uh, datagram header. So this will result in 1064 bytes of IP packet, right? And now assume that we want to send it over a link where the maximum transmission unit size is 1006 bytes. So what will happen? Can I encapsulate uh, an IP packet of 1064 bytes into a frame of size 1006 bytes? No, I cannot. So this means what? So this means that each Each uh, TCP, and this means each TCP, uh, each TCP fragment uh, or IP data uh, gram will be uh, fragmented into two packets. Right. So this means each each TCP packet is fragmented is fragmented into Two packets. Two packets of the packet number one will have the size equal to this, the maximum size allowed by this MTU, which is what? 1006 bytes. And whatever is left will be in place in the second fragment. So if I have to send this 1064 byte and I have transmitted 1006 bytes, this means whatever is left plus. Uh, the 20 bytes header will give me what? 28, uh, sorry, 78 bytes. So I'll be sending, this means um, each of the IP packet will be divided into two uh, fragments, one having a size of 1006 and the other having a size of 78 bytes, okay? so. So this means if I have to send a data of 10 kilobytes, I'll end up uh, sending. So I will end up end up sending. How many number of packets? Yes, 20 packets. 20. Smaller IP datagrams. If. If. What if? TCP had sent 96 byte segment. Then what? What do you think? What would have changed here in this number? Yes. So in this case, uh, in this case, uh, we maybe only need to send only need to send. 11 packets instead of instead of 20 packets. So that's why um, uh, the, it has inefficient transmission, right? So if I would have uh, TCP would have sent 966 bytes of segment, um, uh, 11 packets were enough to uh, carry this from one end to the other end. So that's why uh, the fragmentation and uh, reassembly uh, you know, uh, uh, is harmful, right? Uh, so this means IP. Uh, uh, this means IP does not have control over the number of fragments, 
right? So if I want to summarize, so we can see, so what's our, what is our analysis here? So number one, IP does not have control over the number of fragments as we have seen in the previous example here. And the second important thing is uh, TCP can do buffer management because it has more information, right? But, but this is not happening in fragmentation and reassembly. So TCP can do buffer management better as we know and we have covered because uh, it has more information. Since uh, IP has no such information and it has no control over the number of fragments, so this is uh, this is harmful. But the, the question and the question is, uh, what is the alternative? Uh, uh, what are the alternatives to fragmentation then? So, so let's talk about the alternatives uh, to fragmentation. Right. So the first possibility is to send only small datagrams. Why not? Send only small datagrams, which are not greater than the uh, maximum transmission unit size. The second uh, possible alternative is uh, to do MTU discovery and let TCP send appropriate segment sizes. Right, so we can do, we can do what? So we can, uh, we can do uh, path MTU discovery. Why? Because we want TCP to send appropriate uh, segment sizes, or we can set. Uh, don't fragment flag, right? So do not fragment. And this means our router will not forward um, the packet because it cannot encapsulate the packet in a specific uh, size of M MTU, and it cannot fragment because don't fragment flag is set. So what it can uh, uh, do is it can discard it and uh, send um, an ICMP error message, okay? Okay, and most importantly, we can, as an alternative to IP version 4's fragmentation and uh, reassembly, we can have IP version 6 because fragmentation and reassembly is not allowed in IP version 6 because IP version 6 enforces that the minimum MTU should be of size 576 bytes. So this means what? This means no fragmentation at routers. Okay, so um, so this is how fragmentation and reassembly is done, and we have also covered why uh, you know fragmentation and reassembly is not um, is, is is considered harmful, and what are the uh, different alternatives that 